welcome back to Big Gold Belt Media. I am Damian G coming at you with another review here on the channel. And this one's a, a documentary. I'm going to be honest. I wasn't expecting to be able to cover documentaries here on the channel. But alas, here we are. And let me ask you all a question that are watching this review right now. What would you do if the life you thought you were living wasn't really your life? What if your family kept so many secrets, including one in particular, that didn't come out until they were almost on their deathbed? What would you do if you found out? These are the kinds of questions that get answered in this film that I just saw called Filling in the Blanks. Now, the title itself was pretty basic, you would think. But as I got to watch this movie... The title was apropos <laughs> because this is the story of a 54 year old man that through the happenstance and luck of a DNA test discovers one of his family's deepest, darkest secrets that was being held for his entire life. And that secret is that his father is not his biological father. We find out by from John Bain, who also directed this movie, that his dad was not his bio dad. In fact, his dad was named Hesh. That's a cool name if I've ever heard one. But his parents have held that theory and that secret for his entire life. And you know how he found out while taking this DNA test on 23andMe? Swabbed himself. Sent it in, wanted to know more about his heritage, just to make sure. I've done it before, so I understand this. He found a whole bunch of relatives he didn't know he had. A lot of half-siblings, a lot of just people who was associated with his family. It also turns out, all of his other brothers, who has, he has two other brothers, who have their own half-siblings. Weird, right? Not so much. Because if you really look at the situation, if you watch the film, you'll know that this happened in the 50s. And in the 50s, if you couldn't get your swimmers up, you didn't really have in vitro. You didn't really have egg harvesting like we do now with today's technology. But at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, they had such a thing on the low. Nobody had artificial insemination legally. So that is what a lot of families did where the man's swimmers just couldn't work. They would artificially inseminate. And apparently one of the people, Hesh, who was involved in this study, I think he parented over 50 children from his DNA. That, that in and of itself is amazing, okay? We talk about sperm donors all the time as a joke. Like, oh, I can donate sperm. I'll make some money. Turns out my man only made $45 from that, which in today's terms would be about 400 some odd. But still, my man is the genetic father of so many kids. You would have thought he was one of the Greek gods at this point. Or Rejah Ghul. I can't really tell. But as you go down the rabbit hole with John, you're, you're starting to realize, oh, okay, he has one or two siblings. Oh, that's cool. Oh no. Oh, we're, we're hitting double digits and their siblings had other siblings and so on and so forth. And that's one of those weird things where the ball just kept rolling and rolling and he got to meet so many people and we are introduced to so many variants of his family, the branching trees, who connects to what. And the odd thing is, is that maybe only for the film, all these people kept in touch. All these people agreed to be interviewed for, for the film. All these people wanted to get to know each other. Everybody got to meet Hesh, who was the most athletic 80-year-old I've ever seen. I wish I could be that sharp as he was in this movie. Go back and watch it. You'll see that Hesh is pretty damn sharp for his age. That's what he gets for doing jigsaw puzzles. He's a gardener. This dude was legit. But in New York, think about it. Back in New York in the 50s, that was a taboo secret. You didn't go around telling people, hey, I'm about to get artificially inseminated like we do in today's times. 
There was no Instagram to make that announcement. <laughs> you kept that on the quiet because back in those days and even back in my days, you didn't say nothing. You didn't hear nothing. You just kept it moving. Don't press the subject when adults are talking. And I resonated so much with a lot of that because being a, a child of New York based parents, being a child of someone who was raised by his stepfather, who knew he wasn't his bio who knew he wasn't his biological father. I was told very early that my dad is not my biological father. Now I can only imagine if I waited to hear this until I was in my fifties by one of my relatives saying, Oh, by the way, dad's not your dad. Bye. Because that is how some people made the announcement in this movie where it's, Hey, yeah. How's the kids? How's this? Oh yeah, by the way, your dad is not your dad. Anyway, don't talk about this to anybody but me. Bye. Hang up. That actually happened in this movie, <laughs> in this documentary. So it's about a 90 minute jaunt of just trying to piece together the puzzle, pun unintended, of who connects to what and what really constitutes family. So I can speak from experience that my father, even though he's not my genetic father, is my father. That is my best friend in the world. That is the guy I, I look up to the most. That is the person I pattern myself after my entire life. I have met my biological father before he passed. I've even met my biological half siblings from his side of the family. And just like the movie, some of them didn't really want to meet me, but I can't control that. I can't control them. I can't make them think, Hey, let me be friends with my half brother who I don't want any part of. And I understood people's resistance in this movie to not want to see that side of the coin because who wants to have their whole life uprooted and all of a sudden what you thought was normal is no longer normal. And back in those days, change was not welcome in New York City. We like things to stay the same. When change happens, it throws everything out the window. It throws the equilibrium off. Everybody just doesn't like it. People get surly and angry. And that's on display in this movie. Now, John, the way he portrays himself in this movie, and again, he directed this. He directed the film, Filling in the Blanks. And again, look at the title. It makes sense when you think about it. So John made himself seem to be this curious kid that wanted to find out just things. I understand that too. As a person who's done journalism and a person whose favorite book is The Little Prince, where the premise is the prince liked to ask why for everything. For someone who likes to find out the reason for everything and the way things work, I understand John's reasoning for doing this. But I'm sure he didn't think he would have to go down this whole rabbit hole of finding relative after relative after relative and then just kind of having a weird family reunion of half siblings all over the place because his other siblings aren't his siblings or his full siblings, his blood brothers. So it's a whole bunch of half siblings running around reminiscing and joking and laughing. And of course it's probably played up a little bit for the film. That's notwithstanding, but the thought process and the thinking of, if I woke up tomorrow and I found out, let's say I didn't know my dad was my dad. Like I said earlier, and I found out almost on my deathbed. I'm not trying to go on my deathbed, trying to be like, wait, what? And then I croak. So, I didn't mean to get morbid on that, but you have questions. You need them answered. And John needed these things answered. And the way this is all portrayed, it's almost like just figuring out who you are. And it's a microcosm for me, at least of just how we go through the world where we just try to figure out who we are. And when that sense of identity is flipped on its, on its axis, what do we do? We move on. We, we adapt, we rebuild just like in the movie, he adapted. They all met up, they have little reunions, they had their little cohesion, and everybody got along great, it, or at least for the film. I don't, I can't speak for off, off air or anything like that, but the film does portray John as this inquisitive person that got what he was looking for in this movie. And I can tell you from experience, if I, again, if I was in his shoes, I'm, I'm glad I would be able to know, you know, even though my dad is not my dad, at least I knew, at least I was given the opportunity to make that choice of wanting to know. And a lot of people are going to watch this movie and probably draw a lot of connections and parallels to their own lives. 
a lot of us have similar stories of identity, questioning identity, even back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And I'm not just talking about genetics, just in general. Who are we? Who am I? And in this movie, it was ever-changing. So I want to go back to the title and say filling in the blanks. Think about it. I'm not trying to be funny, but filling in the blanks means they were shooting blanks. So at the beginning of this movie, when I read the title, I did not think that was going to be the spin that everybody, that all these men were in this program with their wives because they were not able to impregnate their wives. And you got to remember in the 60s, that is something you did not talk about in the 50s. Men didn't want to admit that they had they weren't virile enough to impregnate their wives or give them the family that they truly wanted. They kept it on the low. Think about it. Men have only been allowed by society to go to therapy in what? The last 10 years? So just imagine the 50s and 60s especially in the staunch Jewish community of New York City. That's a lot to carry. And, and for John's father who raised him, who he thought was his biological father, that was hard for him. He had this bubble, this bubble of emotion. And then when you talk to the rest of John's half-siblings, they're recounting their dad's feelings about how they treated them. Like the proverbial and in one person's case, literal, red-headed child. Where this, this woman, one of John's sisters, claims that her dad would always pick on her and she didn't understand why, because she was different. And then we understand why. She was Hesh's, she was also Hesh's daughter. So it, it's it's really challenging as a human to really try to piece this all together while watching this movie. And I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to be a completely enthralling 90 minutes of time, but there will be moments where I'm guaranteeing you will draw one or two parallels to your own personal existence and your own personal story. So filling in the blanks is something I can say I was not expecting. I was pleasantly surprised. So I typically don't like to give out numerical grades or typically i'd give out letter grades so i will give this film a b minus there were some dry points in it and i did manage to almost not tune out a couple of times I had to take a few breaks while watching the movie because some of it is dry but on the things that i actually was able to connect to and and correlate to my own existence i really appreciate it so go ahead and check it out it comes out soon it comes out in august we're going to have the embargo review released in August 14th. And uh, yeah, enjoy the film. And do me a favor. Go click over at Big Gold Belt Media over on YouTube as the March of 30,000 subscribers continues. BigGoldBelt.com. And hey, give me a follow on social media. Damien G Show across the board, where I normally take cartoons from the 70s to the 2000s, watch them back in real time, and I let you know whether or not they suck. And that is known as the Retro Cartoon Rewatch. So, on behalf of everybody here at Big Gold Belt Media, we'll catch you on the next review. Hopefully, it won't be a blank. Catch you next time.